Welcome back everybody. So I got a birthday greeting for you today. Not my birthday, my birthday was a while ago. A birthday of my 90 year old master friend whose name shall not be uttered because it's top secret. This master friend of mine who just turned 90 years old gave a small speech at his party the other day and I thought it was absolutely wonderful and I wanted to share that with you today. It's simple, it's so simple, but it's so beautiful. Here it is. He said, reflecting on his life, a life of being a teacher. He says, the most important thing about being a teacher is that your life should be the example for your students. Now this is huge, right? Your life, your life itself has to be the example. Now I know there are a lot of people out there who would say, oh no, 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 you know, I have the most techniques. This is what's most important. You know, or I can flip a bow around the fastest. This is what's most important, you know. <laughs> How ridiculous. I can make the most finger puppets. You know, I can do all these crazy things, you know. No, that's not important. What's most important is that your life be the example for your students. It's not much how much you have in here. It's how much you have down in here. What's most important is your life a life worth living? Does your life create beauty and fragrance in the world? You know, my 90-year-old master, friend, he's a wonderful guy. Absolutely. You know, he makes everybody feel comfortable. He's an absolute consummate gentleman. Wherever he goes, people are happy. They're excited to see him. I mean, I know so many people. I know monks. I know business people. I know workers. Everybody loves this guy because he makes them feel good and he brings new vitality to their lives. He gives them new ideas. He reassures them. He is such a wonderful human, a warm, compassionate human that you can't help but love him <laughs> and fearless in his conviction to his art. So when you're choosing a teacher, it's important to look at the life of the teacher. The life of the teacher is what's going to happen to you. Right? You just can't go and train with somebody and think you're going to learn just a few techniques and, and get off scot-free. I've talked about this a lot in my other videos and other platforms, right? Whenever you are interacting with a teacher, you're going to pick up some things, right? So it's important that you look at the teacher's life. Now a shout out to all the gaslighters out there who'll be like, oh, if you don't teach with me, you won't do it properly. You don't know anything about it. Oh, if your foot's turned a little bit wrong, oh, that's terrible. Or, oh, no, you got to hold the hand like this and all this other crap BS, right? Doesn't matter. Let me tell you. Have you ever been in a real situation? Have you ever been in real combat? Nothing works like you think it's going to work, right? You're all sweaty. Things are slippery. The ground is all dirty. How are you going to, you know, do a perfect whatever, onikodaki or gansaki, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's not going to happen. Let me tell you that. What's going to happen is that you keep going and you're able to move with the unexpected. That's what Bampen Fugo is all about, right? You have a decent base, then you move with that Bampen Fugo and you have the guts and the courage and the heart to keep going. Now, does your teacher have that or is, or is, he, is he saying, oh, you got to learn this technique here, you got to learn that technique there, you know, I can twiddle my bow the best, I can make the best finger puppets, whatever. I don't care. Oh man, I'm going to get so much hate. I don't care. I don't care. This is an important message and you got to understand it or you're going to be fooled and you're going to go down a big rabbit hole and 20 years later you're going to be like, what the hell was I doing there? Man, I wasted my whole life. And you're going to be resentful and angry <laughs> and have a terrible life. So there'll be a lot of people out there who gaslight you, who want to sell you something, right? And you get caught up in that. Oh, wow, I have to have this scroll or I have to know this technique or that technique, right? But then you take a look at their life and it's a big steaming pile of shit. You know, they're not kind. They're not nice. People don't feel good around them. They have a shit family life. You know, their kids hate them, even their dog hates them. And yet you want to train with them. You got to look at the whole life. This is what's most important. Think about it. You know, I have two kids now, so this is becoming very, very obvious to me. These kids, these two boys, right, they, they mimic everything I do. Like, they're like little copy machines, right? They'll mimic my dance, they'll mimic my laugh, they'll mimic my jokes. They don't even speak English or Japanese yet, but they'll mimic my jokes the same cadence, the same rhythm, the same look on their face. Unbelievable, right? It's frightening, you know? <laughs> so I'm trying to be the best father I can to them, right? And make sure I don't, you know, ruin their lives. <laughs> Kids will mimic their parents, right? Now we've all heard our parents say something like this. 
do as I say, not as I do. And as a kid, you're like, well, that's, that's stupid. <laughs> you know, why would I do as you say? I'm just, but you're doing it. Why can't I do that? I mean, I know I did that as a kid and I got in so much trouble. And I got in so much trouble for saying that too, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you're doing it. And they say, it doesn't matter what I do. <laughs> do what I say. <laughs> well, it's ridiculous. Uh, kids are smart. People are smart. You know, they look at you and then they start to mimic you. I mean, I remember when I was a kid in high school, right? And there'd be a, my cool friend, right? He spoke real cool. He walked real cool. The next minute, you know, I was trying to walk like him and speak like him, you know? And I was like, what am I doing? This is not me, right? But you mimic. You pick up those things. So your life has to be the example, right? And as a student, you have to watch your teacher, right? And you have to look at the whole life, not just like what's on the ground there or what they're showing, the pictures they have or the, or the knowledge they have or all this stuff, because if their life is not fragrant, if their life is not beautiful, if their life is not flowering, if their life is not enriching the people around them and themselves and everything around them, animals, plant life, whatever, if it's not enriching the whole universe with them, then you might want to think, well, hmm, and if you are a teacher, you have to create that example within yourself. And you might be thinking, well, how do I do that? How do I become the example? Well, I think it takes a little bit of insight. Now, this is a special word. I just came to my mind right now because insight, not outside, right? Because we're always looking out, right? This takes insight, a little bit of looking inward into oneself. I was talking to a student of mine and he asked me, well, how do I do it? And I said, well, for example, say you have a nice diamond ring a wedding ring on your finger or something and you're throwing something in a big trash can and the wedding ring slips off into the trash can and sinks down to the bottom. How do you get that ring out? I mean, do you just reach down there ad hoc and switch your hand around and grab something out? Well, that's not the best way to go about it, right? Because what are you going to pull out? Probably like the rotten, sour yogurt cup of all your failed relationships, right? <laughs> then you're going to, oh, that's not it. Then you're going to reach down there and you're going to pull out the molded coffee grinds of your father's abuse that he suffered from his grandfather, right? And you're going to be, ah, oh, that's disgusting, right? Then you're going to reach down there again and get the rotten banana of your mom's aloofness and sarcasm, right? You're going to reach down there and you're going to grab the rotten, disgusting, slimy eggshells of the alienation you felt in high school, you're gonna throw, right? I mean, right? And you're never going to find what you're looking for because it's just full of all this shit, right? So the thing is to pull out that thing, that disgusting you know, yogurt cup of your failed relationships. Take a look at it, set it aside. Take out those coffee grinds of your father's abuse that he suffered from his grandfather or his father. Take a look at that, set it aside, right? Pull out all these things that are controlling you without even you realizing that they're affecting your daily life. You know, pull out that rotten banana of your mom's aloofness and sarcasm, right? Look at it, put it aside, right? These things are affecting you, whether you realize it or not. And they've created this life. So what I say is to go to that garbage pail and take each thing out. Look at it and set it aside so it doesn't bother you anymore. So it doesn't affect your life anymore. And at the end, the garbage pail is empty. Shout out to Mutadori, right? And then there's just that diamond ring. So grab that diamond ring out, hot blow on it, shine it up, man, because that's you. That's it. Shine on crazy diamond, right? That's you. You are the diamond. Don't ever forget that, right? That's the most important thing. But don't think you're done. Don't think, oh, I'm done. I found the diamond ring and polished it up. I'm shining. I'm good. Because what do garbage cans do? They collect garbage, right? And on this path of life, garbage starts to collect like dust on a mirror, right? No matter what you do, there's going to be some garbage that you're picking up on your way through life, right? So you've got to continually monitor that garbage can and make sure you can pull it out and throw stuff away. Shout out to Mamichi no Jigai from the Gogyo. Right? Am I right? Hmm? That simple sentence packs so much wisdom in it, right? If you're the teacher, remember that your life has to be the example. And for your life to be a fragrant, beautiful example, you have to have a little insight. You have to have a little bit of awareness to be able to empty out your garbage can and create the life that you want and that your students deserve. And if you're a student, make sure when you choose a teacher, not to just look at the flashy things in front of you, like the notebooks of techniques or the different weapons or all the different shiny objects in front of you, but look at the life of the teacher. Is it a beautiful life? Is it a life worth living? Is it happiness? Because this is the biggest treasure. Is this person happy? Does he create happiness? Does he create joy and goodwill in the world? Make sure that he's someone 
whose life that you can respect and someone whose life that you can aspire to. Otherwise, don't do it. Go. Second part of the message was, again, simple but very deep. It says, you know, my teacher lived to 85. I'm 90. And I wish for you to all live even longer than that, 100 years more. Now, this is super touching for me because I have two sons. And you bet I want to live a long life. Uh, not for myself because... You know, I just keep doing the same thing over and over, getting up, brush my teeth, take a dump, eat breakfast, whatever. But I want to live a long time to see my two boys grow up and help them on their journey in the trials and tribulations in life. Also, I think it's important that you live a long life because sometimes it takes a while to empty that garbage pail. Sometimes it takes a while just to realize what the problem is. Here's a funny story, right? You know, in my life, there'd be these big problems. And I'd have this group of friends and have this big problem. And I'd be like, damn it, there's a problem. And then the group would break up and I'd move, I'd go somewhere. And I'd create another group of friends and the same problem would happen. I'd be like, hmm, this is terrible. Why is this happening again, right? And then that group would break up and everyone would go their separate ways. And I'd move somewhere and I'd get a whole new group of friends. And the same sort of thing, same sort of problems would happen. And I'd be like, damn, look at that. It's happening again. Is this just life? Is this the way it's happening? And again, I'd do it again. A whole new group of friends, the same problems, the same tribulations occur. Everyone breaks up and I'm thinking, this is really strange. You know, why is, every, why is everyone, you know, why are everyone such dicks? <laughs> but then I realized, wait a minute. The common denominator in all these situations was myself. Now that's a big point of realization. That's a big point that you have to get to and take responsibility for your life. If you can't, then I don't think you'll ever be a good teacher. I said it. <laughs> so my wish to you all is to live a good life, live a long life, be the example that your students deserve, and if you're a student, to find a teacher that embodies those things that will make your life truly magnificent. So that's it. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Just go ahead and do it. I know there's a lot of people out there watching. Don't do it. Press the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and please leave a message below. Leave a comment below. That really helps us out. I love reading your comments. It inspires me, keeps me going. Also, if you'd like to make a contribution, we really appreciate that. You'll find a PayPal link in the description below where you can make a contribution. We certainly appreciate that. Until next time, everybody. See you next time.